In a few minutes, I'll show you how to turn Lumen's tropical house into a Mediterranean paradise using every pro technique I know. You will master every step from scene setup to final renders. Using a Lumen example scene, you can open and follow along with me right now. I'll also show you how to download the full project with all effects included for free. So if you want renders that look like this, let's get started. Open Lumion, go to Example Scenes tab and open Tropical House. Even though this looks great, I think this project has much potential that it deserves a complete refresh. Instead of keeping it as a tropical environment, we are going to transform it into a Mediterranean paradise. Now we need to hide three layers. Main vegetation, fine detail nature, and backdrop. With a clean canvas, we can build a Mediterranean environment from scratch. Now, I'm going to show you placement tools that will save you hours of manual work. On a new layer, name it Bushes. Here's where most people waste hours. They place assets one by one. Watch this instead. Line placement tool, click the start point, click the end point. Activate conform to ground. It makes everything look like it belongs there. Next, randomize the position, randomize spacing, and direction. Perfect lines look fake. Nature is always chaotic. Now let me show you another of my favorites in Lumion, the cluster placement tool. Click confirm to ground and increase the number of items. Initially, they are all clustered together, so we need to adjust the cluster range. This size looks quite nice. This tool is perfect for quickly filling large areas. You can see that very, very quickly, we have a natural looking terrain. Now I'll be adding a lot of the vegetation assets from the Mediterranean category. I will place some of the assets that I used here on the screen so you can pause the video and add them to your favorites. I'm also using some trees that I got from 3D Sky. I'll leave the link to them in the description below. Now, look at these Mediterranean references. What do you see here? Rocks, lots of rocks. I found some fantastic assets from Megascans, which I'll link in the description below. Let's place a couple of them on the terrain. Scale up, press F on the keyboard, it will automatically align with the landscape. This is a huge time saver. Push it down slightly into the ground as well. Repeat. Scale, rotate, embed, always from your camera angle. If the camera can see it, don't waste time perfecting it. For the next step, I'll quickly create some landscaping in the garden areas using these Mediterranean assets. Now, you will notice that in our project, we need some palm trees to complete the Mediterranean modern look. Let's create a new layer and name it Palms. Add tall palms around the infinity pool. Now, we need to populate the area a bit more. Let's go to Find Detail Nature and find the palm tree section. Here, we have a whole collection of different palm trees different heights, different shapes, and different ages. Real landscapes have variety. Your renders should too. Now, you will notice we already have a lot of assets in our scene. Before we go further, let me show you how to manage this complexity without your computer catching fire. I know this seems like a detour from the creative work, but trust me, working at 15 frames per second will kill your creativity. These two minutes of setup will save you hours of frustration. So even though we have layers to organize everything, 
it can still be difficult to find specific elements when you have hundreds of assets. That's why Lumion introduced the Scene Inspector this year. You see this icon with a magnifying glass? When you click it, you will see all the assets and layers organized clearly. Everything is categorized by groups, so you can select all of them immediately. Or select specific ones to see where they are in the scene. This feature is incredibly useful for managing complex scenes. You can even filter by asset type. Let's say I just want to see nature assets. I can filter and see only those elements. For me, this is a game changer when you are working on large projects. And again, since this scene is getting quite heavy, let me show you some performance optimization tricks. If you click this icon on the top right corner, you will see the performance center window. At the bottom, you can quickly activate several performance boosting options. If your scene is running slowly, you can change the quality to low. Just by doing this, I increased about 12 to 13 frames per second. The scene doesn't look as good, but it's much more workable. And one of the most important settings from my experience is the resolution. I'm currently at 67% on my 4K monitor. If I put it at 100%, I lose about 7 frames per second. If I go down to 50%, I get another 5 frames per second boost. And you don't see much difference in quality. At 33%, there's a slight difference, but the quality is still very good. And I'm getting 40 frames per second. I think this is the sweet spot for most people. The second thing I recommend is activating proxies. When they are on, if your computer goes below a specific frame rate, Lumion will replace complex objects with simple blue lines to help performance. Now that our scene is running smoothly, let's change some of these materials to achieve that authentic Mediterranean look. And I'm going to show you a texture tiling fix that most people forget. For Mediterranean houses, I want clean lines and white stoke materials. Let's go to the material library and find something from the stucco section. Go to stone, plaster, and we'll find stucco options. We also have plaster materials that can work well for this project. I want something with visible texture. Mediterranean buildings typically have quite pronounced textures. But first, let me hide the decals layer so you can see exactly the texture we are working with. This one has nice lines and character, but I don't like that we can see the texture repetition clearly. So to fix this, go to UV coordinates and enable landscape tiling. When you do this, the repetitive tiling disappears. This is very important for realistic results. Now we can copy this material and paste it to other surfaces. For this concrete area, let's find something different. Go to stone, then concrete, and find something more suitable. We need to adjust the X offset and Z offset to get the position right. For the floor, let's go to stone, then terrazzo textures. It's a beautiful mixture that's very characteristic of Mediterranean design. Now, nothing in nature has super sharp edges. So let's round them slightly. This makes such a difference in realism. For the pool, this current tile looks too damaged and dark. Let's go to the tiles, then mosaic, and find something that looks newer and cleaner. By the way, if you are enjoying this tutorial and want to dive deeper into Lumion, I have a full step-by-step -step course. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, our materials look authentic, but materials are only half the story. Let's set up our cameras and lighting. Let's enter photo mode and set all our cameras before we start adding effects. For the first camera, let's use a 16mm lens. Now click Set Camera to save this first shot. Now copy all these settings and create a new camera. Paste the settings. Camera 2, 14mm, even wider. Camera 3, 35mm, tighter. Camera 4, 24mm, but vertical, 3x2 aspect, Instagram ready. Camera 5, 18mm vertical, 16x9 stories format. 
Perfect, we now have six professional compositions that tell the complete story of this Mediterranean villa. Now it's time to add render effects and lighting that will make these renders absolutely stunning. In ray tracing, let's activate fully ray traced water. This is a new feature that came out this year. It provides stunning, lifelike reflections, and the water will react naturally to light and surroundings. So let's go to Build with Effects and select a different water material. I like this one called Nice Pool. We can adjust the parameters if you want more waves, more reflection, and the wave scale. We want it to look calm and inviting, not like the ocean. Now let's add real skies. These real skies are 360 degree images containing photos of actual skies and they bake all the lighting information onto your scene, making it incredibly realistic. Let's go to clear and select this one because I want that beautiful clear blue Mediterranean sky. You can see that adding this sky alone makes a huge difference to our scene. Now we need to adjust the lighting. First, let's rotate the lighting to see the sun placement and find a better position for our project. I like this position because we have the sun hitting one side of the facade, creating beautiful shadows. This is what gives dimension to the building. Before we adjust any further, we need to do a couple of things. We need to add a color correction effect. This color correction has auto exposure that changes shadows and lighting automatically, but I want to control this myself. Let's disable auto exposure. Now, if we go back to real skies, we can see that when we increase the lighting, nothing adjusts automatically. We have full control. Let's go back to color correction and increase the exposure slightly. And now back to real skies, let's adjust the sky brightness because I want a darker, more dramatic shadows. In color correction, let's add just a little bit of temperature, maybe 110. So the scene is slightly warmer. You don't want to overdo this because your entire scene becomes yellow. We are not making a Hollywood Mexico filter. <laughs> Maybe 115 is good. Let's make the tint 95 so we have a little bit more green, since we have lots of vegetation in our project. For contrast property, I'll make it about 115. I want more contrast in this scene. Then decrease the shadows and increase the gamma slightly. This brightens the overall picture. Saturation make it 90% value. Now we have our base look. Next, let's add an autumn colors effect from sky and weather. Apply this to all layers and click color hue shift to make it warmer. Plus add color variation. This makes each tree element slightly different in color and you know, nothing in nature is exactly the same. So this is important for realism. Let's add a precipitation effect not for actual rain, but for just a little bit of that wet effect, especially around the pool borders. Now let's add some camera imperfections for realism. Add chromatic aberration, just a little bit, don't overdo it. Add vignetting to darken the corners slightly and bloom to overexpose the highlight subtlety. I like to add a little bit of noise to my renders, just a touch. Also, add about 10% sharpen. These imperfections are what make renders look like they were shot with a real camera instead of being computer generated. Real lenses are full of imperfections. Let's add depth of field so not everything is in perfect focus. Here you can define the type of bouquet based on camera lens blades. This is more technical, but let's have a look at this lens I got here. It has 8 blades, creating this specific bokeh shape, versus this 11 blade lens that creates rounder bokeh. These details matter for photorealism and character. Now copy this effects list and paste it to our camera. Next, let's create one shot with volumetric sun and fog, a new retracing feature. Select the morning sky, position the sun properly, then add the volumetrics effect. Adjust intensity and fog height for that hazy morning look. You can adjust sun intensity, sky intensity, noise and noise scale independently. Now we are ready to render these images. 
and I'm going to show you a rendering trick that makes your images render five times faster. Let's go to ray tracing and set this to 256 samples. Then activate all of these options for the highest quality. Now click render. I'm going to add the depth map and material ID map for post production. I'm rendering at this resolution, but I'm also clicking AI upscale. This feature, while still in beta, transforms your low resolution images into high resolution up to 8K. It allows you to render your image five times faster than normal. Great for people with lower end machines. This is a huge time saver. There's also the Lumion Cloud button. This is a new visual hub for collaboration integrated with Lumion. It uploads images and panoramas directly to Lumion Cloud, where you can do version control, add notes directly on images, and share with clients or team members. I love this feature because all my projects are always organized in the cloud, and clients can add feedback right on the images themselves. And when you upload a new version, you can compare the changes easily. I've done a full tutorial about Lumion Cloud. You can watch it uh, up there. And if you don't have Lumion yet, there is a free trial on their website. Students get Lumion Pro completely free. Links in the description. Now, here's our final render. For post-production, I use Photoshop and go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and try Auto first to see what it gives me. I often turn on black and white because I can see the contrast better this way. It looks pretty good, but maybe the highlights can be pushed a little bit more. I like to create an S-curve like this, just slightly. This is a classic photography technique that adds punch to your images. I can see this area has very green colors with too much contrast because the sun is eating this area strongly. So let's go to HSL adjustments. For the greens, if you move to the right, it becomes very green and unnatural. To the left, it becomes more yellow. Right now, we have it at this value. So I'm going to push it slightly to the left for a more natural look. Maybe reduce the saturation of the green slightly and a little bit of the yellows as well. We can also reduce shadows a bit. That's basically all the post-production we need. I keep it minimal because the render quality is already there. After this, I do some AI post-production, but I won't go into that in this video since I've already done a comprehensive tutorials on that topic, including one specifically for Magnific AI. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. Look at this transformation. We've gone from a tropical house to a stunning Mediterranean villa. And we did this using a systematic, professional workflow that you can now apply to any architectural visualization project. Different times of day, different moods, different compositions, all from the same scene. This is the power of having a solid workflow. The scene file will be available for download. You can get it from the link in the description. You will need to go to my website, fill in your name and email, and you will receive the scene file for Lumion 25 with all the effects in your inbox. Just make sure to check your spam folder. This download includes all six cameras with all the effects we set up, so you can study exactly how everything is configured. And I would love to see your renders. Tag my Instagram with the renders you create from this project. I invite you to make some changes and try to make it your own version. Maybe try a different time of day or add your own landscaping touches. I'll be very curious to see what you create and I'll share the best ones on my Instagram as well. And if you want to take your interior renders a step further, check out my tutorial. I'll link it in the description. That tutorial shows you the techniques to create interiors with detail and realism. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this Mediterranean redesign tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.